So a few weeks ago, I got my hands on the HP Elizabeth K40 G3, a laptop that at first glance doesn't scream for attention but quietly sits there almost like it knows what it is capable of. I picked my app refurbished for around $200 and honestly, I wasn't expecting much but after using it for a while, I realized that sometimes good engineering doesn't need RGB lights or fancy marketing. Now this laptop might be a few years old but it still carries the Elite Book charm. Simple, professional and surprisingly premium for its age. In this video, we are going to look at how it performs in 2025, what it still gets right and what it doesn't and whether it's still worth buying if you're on a tight budget. Now when you first look at the Elite Book 840G3, it doesn't exactly stand out but once you hold it, you start to understand why HP gave it the Elite Book name. It feels solid in the palm, the design is clean, professional and well balanced. A kind of laptop that fits perfectly in an office, a classroom or in a boardroom. The chassis is made of plastic and is so well done that for about a week, I actually thought it was aluminium. The surface feels firm and smooth to the touch, though not the most resistant to scratches. After some days of use, you start to notice some light marks here and there, probably the trade-off that comes for this sleek finish. The lid and the palm rest areas feel premium, but the bottom panel and the screen bezels remind you that it's still an older generation Elite book. The bezels in particular are huge by today's standards, but let's be fair, back then, this was the sweet spot for durability and structure. The hinge though is excellent, it feels sturdy and opens smoothly with one hand, no wobbles, no creaks. It's one of those details that you might not notice at first, but you appreciate it every time you open the laptop. It's also quite portable, not ultra thin but slim enough to slide into your backpack without much hassle. It's lightweight too, especially for its category. And that's something I didn't expect. The speakers fire upward from the top of the keyboard deck, not from underneath, which is great. They are not as punchy as the newer Elite Book models, but for calls, movies, and casual music, they sound clear and get a job done. The power button sits neatly above the escape key on the top left. On the opposite end, the top right houses the dedicated buttons for Wi Fi and speaker mute. Down at the bottom right, you've got a fingerprint sensor tucked beside the arrow keys. Now let's take a quick trip around its edges because this is where the Elite Book 840G3 quietly shows off its usage and versatility. Starting from the left side, HP kept things pretty business-like. You get a Kensington lock slot for physical security, followed by the air vents that push warm air out of the side. Next to that, there's a VGA port, something you rarely see anymore. But still super handy if you are connecting to older hardware like projectors or monitors in classrooms or conference rooms. Then comes a single USB Type A port, and besides that, what looks like a smart card reader. Though depending on your configuration, that slot may or may not be functional. Swinging over to the right side, things get a little bit more modern. You've got the charging port followed by the SIM card slot for mobile data support. There's also a docking connector that HP designed for its enterprise docking stations. Again, perfect for business users who want a full desktop setup at office. Next to that, you'll find an Ethernet port for wired internet, another USB Type A port, and a combo headphone microphone jack. There's also what looks like a display port output for external displays, and finally, a USB C port that supports both data transfer and display output, but no power delivery. So you can use it to connect external monitors or drives, but you can't charge through it. One thing you should note is that this laptop does not have a dedicated HDMI port, so you could use a converter but that's something worth noting. Altogether, the port selection covers pretty much everything you need, except HDMI. Let's flip it open and talk about what you'll be staring at most, the display. This Elite Book 840G3 comes with a 14-inch Quad HD IPS panel, running at 2560 by 1440 pixels, and right off the bat, it looks really good for its age. The screen is sharp, colors are crisp, and the text looks razor clear. It's not an OLED or a high refresh rate panel. It's a standard 60Hz screen, but for office work, streaming, or even light editing, it's more than enough. Brightness wise, it holds up surprisingly well. I don't have the official NIT rating, but I can say that it's bright enough for both indoor and outdoor use. And since it's anti reflective, you won't be fighting off glares from windows or overhead lights. Viewing angles, also solid. Being an IPS display, it holds color and brightness well even when you are looking from the sides or from slightly above. Even at extreme angles, it still holds up pretty well. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, or should I say, the bezels. 
they are big like really big by modern standards but this is a 2016 era laptop so we will cut it some slack back then these chunky borders were just how business laptops looked so if you can look past the bezels then this screen is a joy to use watching videos looks clean editing photos feels natural and text is easy on the eyes it's not designed for color critical work but it's well balanced vibrant without being oversaturated and warm enough to avoid that cold bluish tone that some older displays have overall it's a display that doesn't try to impress you with fancy specs but it quietly does the job so well the elite book 840g3 runs on an intel core i5 6300u a 6th generation dual core 4 thread processor that clocks at 2.4 GHz, with stable boost pushing it a bit higher when things get demanding. Paired with 8GB of DDR4 RAM, a 256GB SSD, and Intel HD 520 integrated graphics, this machine isn't trying to be a performance monster, but it handles day to day tasks like a champ. Browsing, streaming, working on documents, switching between multiple apps, all smooth, it doesn't feel sluggish at all unless you start throwing really heavy workloads at it. Now, I pushed it a bit further because, well, curiosity. I fired up 3D Mac Time Spy, which tests DirectX 12, and it scored around 355 overall, with 312 for graphics and 1651 for the CPU. Then I ran Eugen Haven, which tests DirectX 11, and it scored 121. The difference in the scores just shows how dated integrated graphics can be for gaming. You could manage to get it to play light games on low settings, but nothing too demanding. It's not built for gaming, it's built for reliability. As usual, I tested it with a 4K project with motion graphics and transitions just to see how far it would go. At this point, I'm not going to say much. I'm going to let you see for yourself and judge how it handles playback at different resolutions. The SSD though was clearly SATA based, not NVMe, and you can feel the difference. Read speeds cap at around 486 MB per second, and write speeds around 266 MB per second. If you swap that for an NVMe M.2 SSD, you will see speeds well above 1 GB per second, and trust me, that's an upgrade you'll feel immediately. The mouse are surprisingly good. The fan does spin up a bit under load, but it's not noisy and the laptop stays cool enough to use comfortably on your lap. All in all, the Elizabeth 840 g 3 isn't a powerhouse, it's a steady hand. It won't win any races, but it will get you through your everyday tasks reliably, quietly and without complaint. Typing on the Elizabeth 840 g 3 is one of those simple pleasures you don't really expect until you start using it. The keyboard feels solid, the keys have good travel, a soft landing and a satisfying click that makes typing long documents actually enjoyable. The white backlight is evenly spread across the board, bright enough for late night typing but not blinding in dim light. 
HP's keyboards have mostly been reliable and this one continues that tradition. It's not mechanical or flashy, but it feels right. Every key press lands where it should. The trackpad on the other hand is okay. It's usable but not my favorite. It supports Windows precision drivers, so gestures like two finger scrolling or pinch to zoom works perfectly fine. But it doesn't feel as smooth or responsive as the newer Alice Book models. You can tell it's an older generation design, a bit stiffer, a bit smaller, but still functional. Now the audio. Here is where things get interesting. The 840G3 features support firing speakers placed above the keyboard. They are not going to shake the room, but they sound decent. Mids and highs come through clearly, but bass is lacking, which is expected for a thin laptop of this era. They are loud enough for meetings, YouTube, or background music while working. Compared to newer Alice Book models that come with Bang & Ops tuning, this one falls short, but it's far from bad. For business use or casual entertainment, it's more than enough. And yes, if you plug in a good pair of headphones, you will get even better results. Battery life is in this laptop's strong suit. But considering its age, it's not terrible. I got around 1 hour 30 minutes to 2 hours 30 minutes depending on what I was doing. Typing or browsing, you'll be fine. Watching videos or multitasking, expect the lower end. It charges using a 65W barrel type charger, not through the USB-C. And if you happen to get one with a lower wattage charger like a 45 watts, you will notice it right away. The laptop will charge, sure, but you will lose a bit of performance because it's not getting the full power it expects. So if you are buying one, make sure it comes with the right 65 watt adapter. If you have used a new wireless book model or even a newer business class branded laptop, then you will agree with me how frustrating it is to know that you cannot upgrade it when you want to. At best, you could only upgrade the SSD. This LS book though is different. Pop off the bottom panel and you'll find two RAM slots, an M.2 slot, and even a 2.5 inch SATA drive bay. That means you could add extra storage, upgrade to an NVMe SSD for faster speeds, or bump up your RAM to 16 or 32 GB for smooth multitasking. It's a kind of flexibility that keeps an older laptop like this one relevant even for years later. So would I still recommend it? Well, that depends. If you're a student, an office worker, or you're just someone who needs a dependable machine for everyday tasks. The Alice Book 840G3 is a surprisingly good deal, especially if you find one refurbished for around $200. It's fast enough, quiet enough, and it's well built to still hold its own in 2025. But if you are into heavy workloads, video editing, gaming, or anything graphics intensive, this isn't your guy. You would want to get something newer, maybe an Alice Book G8 or G9 series and beyond. The 840G3 may be a little dated, but here's the thing. Specs may age, but good engineering lasts a lifetime.